Welcome to Tuesdays with Marv, the Medford Arts Resource Vehicle. I'm Sarah Beardsley, co-president of Mackey. Marv is an arts center on wheels, bringing supplies and inspiration to local neighborhoods. In this time of physical distancing, Marv is staying home too, but we want to continue to bring arts programming to Medford and beyond with a series of creative events featuring local artists and their work. We want to thank our funders, including the Medford Arts Council, Arts Alive Medford, the Massachusetts Cultural Council, and members of the Medford Arts Center, Inc. If you are an artist who would like to share your work as part of this series, please email us so we can send you our application form. Thank you for coming and enjoy your time with Marv. Ah, uh, good morning. Uh, this is Wayne Stratman, um, shooting a film with my assistant Carrie here from uh, from Boston uh, at Stratman Design. So we're going to show you a few of the uh, unusual things we're uh, working on or playing on with for uh, potential clients and, and whatnot, such as right in the front of me here, I have all these uh, shapes that aren't connected to anything, but um, as you can see, they all light up. Um, and let's see, some of them light up very brightly. Um, so these organic, uh, I mean, molecular forms here um, are all excited by a high frequency power supply that uh, there's a metal plate under the carpet these things are sitting on and it's energized with high voltage, high frequency, just producing a field up here. And the field will light anything that's a piece of glass is filled with a, a low pressure inert gas. So I'm just going to walk around and show you a few things. And uh, everything here is glass, everything is filled with gas, and everything's going to light up. So moving over to this is what's called a mesmer tube. And a mesmer tube is a tube within a tube. And the inner tube is coated with a phosphor, something that lights up with ultraviolet light. And there's an electrode right in the middle here inside the inner tube and it's producing a xenon discharge down here and uh, that xenon produces a lot of UV and the UV is exciting up this uh, green phosphor and this is uh, about a 12 inch diameter piece of glass it's about the biggest uh, we can make these pieces um, and it's a, quite a difficult piece to make you need a very very large lathe to put this together um, the base is made by a, a, a brilliant designer friend of mine, Richard Burbage, Burbage Design. Really cool steampunk uh, base he's made out of all sorts of found pieces from parts of stoves, old uh, lighting uh, controls, non-functional gauges, whatnot. So, moving on, um, show you a new effect about a year old now and this is called a tulpa tube and it's kind of a different type of uh, gas discharge I'm slowly turning the power up here and it's very very interactive as you can see when I put my hand down on it and we make these in a whole wide variety of colors and activities and whatnot kind of like it running a very minimal amount of power it produces these little spikes and you can tune it way way down to there's just a few of them dancing around there or way up this is a I believe an eight inch diameter piece of glass about six, seven feet long. The way it works is there's a stretch wire from end to end. And so the discharge is not going from end to end like most pieces. It's going from that center wire outward. All right. So moving on, just to... Okay, this piece here is right out of uh, Dr. Frankenstein's 
movie. Uh, it's a Jacob's Ladder, but it's uh, Jacob's Ladder completely enclosed and totally safe and also much brighter than your average Jacob's Ladder. Uh, this is probably the only blue Jacob's Ladder you've ever seen because it's only one of two in the world. It's got a blue uh, gas discharge and uh, this comes from Krypton and Iodine. And very controllable with my electronics, I can control the, the length of the, uh, the time the thing goes up and holds up at the top. And we've made these up to four feet long, but they get a little difficult in shipping. So I'm starting to make them wider and shorter. All right, let's go to the, back to my table over here. I'm going to show you a few other pieces from our archives, the, the part of our shop, what we call, this, this is where sculpture goes to die. Um, so this is a smaller mesmer tube. Um, I discovered this almost by accident. I'll show you how I originally thought this was going to light up. It's very frenetic like this which is okay, but it's a little bit tough to live with because it's so uh, fast. And they discovered if I put a, what's called a virtual ground on it, it slows it down. It makes a nice undulating effect. Once again, this is a tube within a tube and I've been making a series of paintings, um, three-dimensional paintings using my own uh, using phosphorus to make my own set of paints and then I spend a good deal of time uh, picking the colors that go well next to each other. Um, by doing experiments, the problem is you have to do these experiments under ultraviolet light because when all these tubes are off all the phosphors look white. We call them mesmer tubes because if you put this on a table with a group of people after five minutes they just sit there completely transfixed because it's a property of the human mind. If you give them something random and bright, the mind becomes transfixed trying to figure out the pattern. If this had any kind of pattern to it that you could discern, you would instantly lose interest, but it doesn't. Completely random. And I'm interacting with it. I'm drawing the arc towards my hand. A lot of the pieces I make are fully interactive. The field is going out. Let's see if I can make this light or not. Make it light a little bit. So I'm interacting with the field and drawing the arc. All right, moving on here. Um, piece next to it, part of a series I did a while back. This was my favorite. This is called Crush, Kill, Destroy. It's a a uh, flameworked robot, uh, sort of a compilation of a few robots from 1950s and 60s sci-fi. And the electrode, so to speak, is the <clears throat> body of the robot is uh, silver plated on the inside. And his little antenna up here, those are platinum coated, so they're conductive as well. So the whole thing becomes a, we call it a capacitive electrode. And the, the, the title comes, Crush, Kill, Destroy, comes from a, a 60s sci-fi movie um, where the robot, that's all the robot said was crush, kill, destroy. Unfortunately, none of the pieces in this series do I consider shippable. <laughs> Here's a piece I made uh, when I went up to Corning last year. And actually, I was taking a class from my friend Emilio Santini. Um, and I wanted to bring one of my little light up devices to show the class. And uh, so, this is uh, one of those Tulpa tubes, but made in a short, fat version. This actually this started out life as a, uh, a Pyrex jar. I just domed the uh, bottom for vacuum purposes and uh, put a wire through it. And as you can see, this produces a green discharge. And with certain power supplies, you can make those 
whirl like whirling dervishes in there. They start whirling one way and then they go back the other way. And again, it's very, very interactive. And you can make these as long as you want because it's not trying to produce an arc from end to end. It's just going from the middle to the out, outside. So the voltage doesn't have to be uh, very great at all. And adjusting the power on these things really can play and create just one or two of these things. It makes sort of like a plasma flower in midair. I'm just slowly turning the power up or down. Okay. Let's move over to a couple other pieces here. Um, something I love to make because it's so freeing is to make trees. <clears throat> All made with a hand torch and um, you can make them from this size or up to as big as you like. So this is a willow tree uh, that I made and this is filled with Krypton gas. And I've made these up to almost eight feet tall. But for the demo, I pulled out a short one here. I want to show you another one right next to it here. I actually made a series of these. This is the smallest one for my annual Christmas party. Now these are much brighter because uh, come up with a technique of coating the inside with green phosphor. And now I can make trees of any size, any color, any color combination I want. And these run really, really efficiently. Matter of fact, these could be run on um, solar powered batteries. This has xenon gas in it. Once again, because xenon, very, very easy to light and it produces a lot of UV to activate that phosphor. Slowly turn the power supply down and up. All right, I'm gonna move around to the other side of the table here. Um, let's see. <clears throat> this I left on the table because it's in order, just about ready to go out. Um, this is a crackle tube. We make a lot of these. Uh, it's a, this is a six inch diameter by four feet long, double walled tube. And in the annular space between the two tubes are glass beads that are coated with a blue phosphor. Um, and then a high frequency power supply that's got a little circuit that alters the speed of the lightning. So you can go up to really fast or slow it down like so. Those of you who are electrically minded, this is only using about 10 watts of energy. Uh, hardly knows it's on. You could run it with a couple flashlight batteries. We make a lot of big towers in uh, amusement parks out of these crackle tubes. Where they might put 100, 125 tubes up the side of a tower. The last uh, effect, <clears throat> sort of saved to the, the end to show you something that's really uh, a fun piece that I just made this year, uh, sort of as a challenge by a customer, and it's called a spiraling tube. And I'm going to turn it on. It takes a moment to develop. So Carrie will film this as this discharge actually bending 
light here. Watch it. This is actually taking a gas discharge and bending it. see as it gets towards the top you have almost a perfect spiral except if you bring a magnet anywhere near it you can play games with the discharge and it'll tend to recover start making the spiral again Now here's an effect that baffles my physicist friends. I'm going to let it reestablish here. Get a full spiral. And I'm just going to make, as you can see it rising up. I'm going to turn the power down. Eventually, get to the point where it virtually stops. Virtually stopping light dead like that. I'll turn it back up. So this is a effect of high voltage and magnetic forces, thermal forces exact right gas pressure, um, all working together. This piece has to be vertical to operate. And we can say, just bringing a magnet, I'm not within six inches of this. This effect was uh, roughly found by Michael Faraday back in the early 19th century. another one of these next to it and take a moment and I'm going to switch wires. Now this one, the tube <coughs> I coated with phosphors so I can make a somewhat of a light painting. It kind of appears as the thing climbs up the tube. And this also <clears throat> it's not only as an art piece but it's a lesson in physics as well. Change polarities you can get arcs to go in vastly different ways.
That was amazing. Thank you, Wayne. That was great. You're welcome. Well, I wish the audio was a little better, but. 
Well, you know, <laughs> we'll see you hear it. It was really different it. to see what you could do with the light, the different lights that were inside and make them different colors. Right. But that neuron, did you, you kept opening it up to put different mm -hmm. arms on the neuron. Right. Um, do you put the gas in at the end? Yes. <clears throat> After the, all the glass is made, it goes in with a, a kneeler to stress relieve, take all the strain out of the glass, and then it's a, heated up and evacuated, and the gases go in and seal off. Mm -hmm. So you could put any gas that you want in there at that point? Uh, you can put any you want. There's only a few that will light up the phosphors. Mm -hmm. Like neon gas won't do anything for the phosphors because it has no UV in the light. Mm -hmm. uh, that that krypton, krypton has quite a bit of UV. They're just amazing. They're so beautiful. Thank you. That, those, uh, the last shot that Carrie did uh, is a grouping that went down to a museum in North Carolina. Ah, that was going to be one of the questions that I wrote down to ask you is where do these things end up after, after you put this much work? And I've got them uh, working in about a thousand museums worldwide. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, science museums primarily. I do work for uh, trade show companies and uh, companies like Disney and Universal for their theme parks. Um, primary museums. Movies? Matter of fact, if you've uh, seen any of the old Star Trek, mm -hmm. my work. <laughs> I was you know, wondering about that. I wonder if you saw the uh, Borg character. Oh, yeah. Behind it, or uh, the movie uh, a lot of people love, Galaxy Quest, the communicator that the commander had, uh, the face lit up with one of my special effects. How cool is that? Well, always, no matter what happens to you, you will live on in those movies. That's so cool. Um, folks, if, if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself, or if you would prefer uh, to write something into the chat window, you can do that instead. I don't have any questions, but I was really just amazed at what you did and how you made that all happen. It was, it was harder to see what you were doing in the back wherever you were, that you had something up by the light. I think it brings it out to wherever you are. I, but it looked like you were holding something, but I don't know what you were holding. Oh, it was a, a torch. Yeah, it was a gas oxygen torch. It's like a welding torch. Oh, very, all right. Very high temperature torch. That's why I was melting the glass and forming it and joining it. And it was uh, sit, sitting in a glass floor's lathe, which actually turns the piece so that I can keep it heated uniformly easily. And it frees my hands up to use the torch and the glass to make those side arms. It really, it was looking really cool. No, thanks. Wayne, did you invent some of the equipment that you use to manipulate the? Um, I've, I've invented a lot of effects, lighting effects. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think I've, I've done much with the equipment. All glass floors improvise mm -hmm. basic equipment and making it work for them in various ways. Mm -hmm. That's just part of the field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, some of the lighting effects from the spiraling tube, I'm the only one in the world that makes that. The mesmer tube, I'm the only one that makes it. Or the uh, tulpa tube. Wow. All unique to me. Wow. And I've made other, other things here in the shop that are uh, patented products that have been licensed and manufactured worldwide. Is there anything that you haven't done yet that you're like, oh, this is real, I've got to do this before I stop doing this? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's always stuff, you know, and there's nothing where you plan. It's a matter of endless hours playing around with stuff and things just occur to you at the moment. And, 
you go off on a tangent, some things work, some things don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there a limit to how big or how small the container can be for mm -hmm. the gases in order to? Not really, no. Um, I'm working on making sculpture bigger and bigger and bigger with some new processing techniques that uh, I've done some experiment with, experiments with and it works really well. So if you wanted one of my trees and make it fill a two or three story interior space, I could probably do that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> that would yeah. be my whole house. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to propose that for Mass Mocha for their interior, make a three story tree. Well, if anybody's got the space, it's them. So, yeah, we should do that. We're talking about solar powering them too, right? Right. Ooh. And make them run on solar power because they use very, very little energy. Yeah. Matter of fact, last year, until the uh, problems with the lots of problems the uh, uh royal palace in uh, edinburgh Scot no it wasn't edinburgh it was in, in uh, ireland uh wanted me to circle the outside of the castle with solar powered handmade trees but unfortunately we never got a chance to do it oh covid got in the way huh well one of the problems um with ireland in the winter there's not a lot of sunlight to be had <laughs> so, <laughs> yep good point yeah, yeah. yeah. Good point. You Any other questions? Uh, technical, artistic? How do I stay sane? <laughs> <laughs> How do you stay sane? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> that's now, a good. Uh, I really need need the artwork. Is uh, immersing yourself in, in doing something creative is yeah uh, a great way for people who are of that bent. That's their, you know, razor's edge of sanity. It's, it can be very rewarding, can be very difficult, be very disappointing, you know, but you kind of have to do it. Right. Right. But it makes you keep thinking and coming up with a different way to make it happen. That's right. Yeah. Very true. Sarah or Ruth, do you have any questions? I have more if you don't, but I don't want to hug the whole agenda here. Now I'm just enjoying watching you guys. Okay. How did you get involved in this? Um, like most of my life decisions, I sort of stumbled into it. Uh, I was a degreed engineer, um, developed a, a, a passion for doing artwork and um, I wanted to make something out of glass. And once I started glass blowing, I put aside all the other types of artwork I was doing and um just dove into it I, I i traveled a lot with my engineering job and everywhere i went back when they had yellow pages i look up the local glass blower and go and just watch buy mm -hmm. equipment and um started building up my repertoire and my equipment and very boldly i started teaching classes very young and very inexperienced but i learned as i went um like a typical teacher, I was a couple of weeks ahead of my students, and that's all you need. And um, I taught for 14 years nonstop and started writing a column, which every month I had to come up with a new subject and have to research it to death and write about it month after month, year after year. So that taught me a lot. And uh, Corning chose me to be a um, technical consultant for about six, six years. And I learned a great deal working for them. And during that time, I also came up with a lot of product ideas, which I licensed internationally. We had uh, 11 products that were all glass and all lit up that I uh, licensed and sold around the world. And since then, I've just kept developing new things to stay interested and stay ahead of my, any of my peers. And uh, I just wish I could get museum people to be less bureaucratic and more interested in creative stuff. They all buy the same things over and over and over again. When it's a hundredfold times many things that they could have. And I'd even make them at a discount to give them to them, but they don't want to take chances. Wow. Which is indicative. Anyway. 
education. Do you plan on doing anything else with like Star Trek shows or whatever? Where they well, actually no, because all those shows have gone all computer generated images mm -hmm. now, and it wow. shows because it's the in my opinion the imagery is too complex and it's moving too fast. Your eye can't uh, really see it. Um, and I think they're making a big mistake. They're missing out on something basic in terms of our perception. Uh, well, you, yeah. It's hard to lose the, you know, the original ways yeah. of things. And they kind of forget that part, which isn't good. Yeah. Any other questions? Doesn't seem like anybody's written anything else. Wayne, thank you so much. Um, oh, you're welcome. This was this was fabulous, and um, people feel free to forward the link to the YouTube video to all of your friends and go on Wayne's um, website and Instagram site. It's WayneStratman.com for your website, right? It's actually, no. I'm just putting it in the chat now. It's Stratman.com. It's just Stratman.com, right? Stratman.com. Okay. Yep. Really worth a visit. Several visits. Okay. Super. We so appreciate it. It was so special to have you do this and and I want everything that you did, particularly the tree <laughs> slash antlers and the neuron. Yeah. And Later. I have to have a whole new house to put them in because I can't fit them in here, but <laughs> I want them. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. And okay. um, all right. Thanks everybody for coming. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you very yeah. much.